Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time to take a look at the graphics card market once again. And even if you aren't personally interested in buying a GPU right now, and I don't blame you, a lot of them do suck, there's still a lot of interesting things happening in the market. For one, since our last update, both Nvidia and AMD have launched new products. On the Nvidia side, we've gotten one of the all-time stinker graphics cards in the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 8GB, while on the AMD side, they launched the disappointing Radeon RX 7600. Have these cards actually been selling well? Let's take a look after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their new 12th gen CPU contact frame by DeBauer. It's well known that the integrated loading mechanism or ILM of the LJ1700 sockets bends 12th gen CPUs, leading to an uneven contact surface that reduces cooling performance. Solving this issue, the contact frame replaces the ILM, allowing for a much more even contact with the CPU's IHS and the base of your cooler, which in turn reduces operating temperatures. Installation's quick and easy, and thanks to the use of anodized aluminium, the contact frame is non-conductive. And then, for those of you who wish to further maximize contact, Thermal Grizzly now offers an optional lapping tool, so for more information, please check the link in the video description. So the quick answer to whether these new GPUs have captured the market by storm is that no, they haven't. Like a lot of more recent graphics card releases, consumers aren't overly interested in buying a 4060 Ti or RX 7600. Compared to previous GPU generations, both of these launches would be considered anywhere from bad to disastrous, but these sorts of launches are happening more frequently this year, so I guess in some ways very few people buying a freshly released GPU is normal? Not ideal, but that's the position we are currently in. The RTX 4060 Ti 8GB is the more problematic card from a sales perspective. In prior generations, it's this sort of GPU that would sell in big volumes for Nvidia, a card with mid-range performance priced around $400 US. The RTX 3060 Ti, for example, was highly sought after. But after reviews pretty much universally destroyed this product, interest has been very low, and sales debuted well under where they normally would for a card in this class. Our understanding is the 4060 Ti has struggled to outsell even the RTX 4080, a terribly priced card that's been on the market for much longer. Again, normally, if a $400 card was decent, it would significantly outsell something priced at $1,200, especially if that $1,200 card was months old. These sorts of struggles were something that AIBs were concerned about when talking with them at Computex. Several vendors were not overly enthused about their chances of selling heaps of 4060 Ti 8GB models, especially so for anything priced above the $400 MSRP. I suspect this card will continue to have issues selling at its current price, and in fact this is already having ramifications in the market. MSI have discounted their Ventus model of the 4060 Ti 8GB down to $379 US at Newegg, which is $20 below MSRP. This is the fastest ever discounting of a brand new model to below MSRP that we can recall. Even the terribly priced Radeon RX 7900 XT took around two months for discounts to start kicking in. The 4060 Ti was only launched on May 24th, less than one month ago, and it's already being sold for less than the launch price. That's a big red flag for this GPU, and it could signal further price movement to come. But before all the AMD fanboys jump up and celebrate Nvidia's failure, the Radeon RX 7600 has been a bit of a fail as well. Sales for this model are hardly any better than the 4060 Ti, and overall interest in this product has been rock bottom for a new mainstream AMD GPU. Buyers are still interested in grabbing certain Radeon models. The RX 6700 XT and RX 6600 in particular have been selling well, all things considered, but the RX 7600 priced at $270 has failed to capture the interest of GPU shoppers, for good reason too, as it's still too expensive for the performance you're getting. Like the RTX 4060 Ti, the RX 7600 has also started to drift below MSRP less than a month after launch, which is pretty embarrassing for a new model. On Newegg right now, there is an XFX Speedster Kick 308 model priced at $270, but with a $10 discount code, bringing the actual price to $260. So not heaps below MSRP, but normally we wouldn't be seeing that sort of discount at all so close to launch. In our review, we predicted it wouldn't be long before this card is selling for below $250 US, and it seems that we're already on the way to that being the case. 
With these two new GPUs flopping hard, it begs the question of whether there is any current generation GPU that people are actually interested in and buying. The best answer we have to that right now is the GeForce RTX 4070, which had a disappointing launch but has been picking up steam more recently. I think part of that is due to buyers now having a good idea of what lower tier models are looking like. Take for example a shopper with around $500 US to spend. At the launch of the RTX 4070, that shopper would probably see the RTX 4070 at $600 and have a lukewarm reaction, like many in the community, both reviewers and enthusiasts. The response to this would be, wait and see what Nvidia will do at $400 and $500. Historically, cards in that price range have offered better value. But now we do have that information, we know the cards in that price range are the terrible RTX 4060 to 8 gig or the 16 gig model for a ludicrous $100 more. The value isn't there, so it makes sense some shoppers are saving up a bit more and pushing up to the RTX 4070 instead. We're not talking heaps of people doing this, but enough to make the 4070 one of the better GPUs this generation from a sales standpoint. As for current GPU prices, it remains the case where most models are being sold below MSRP at the moment to varying degrees. There are two main exceptions to this from NVIDIA, the RTX 4070 and the 4070 Ti, which have resisted price movement for now, and especially the 4070 I expect to remain at $600 for the foreseeable future. All other models from NVIDIA and AMD are below MSRP though. The RTX 4090 is just slightly below, the 4080 $100 below at the moment, the 4060 Ti as we said $20 below already, and then on the AMD side the RX 7900 XTX continues to sit $50 under MSRP, the 7900 XT is a whopping $120 under, and the RX 7600 is slightly below as we talked about. Even with these discounts, most of these products are not particularly great deals, and price movement compared to previous months is minimal. What is perhaps more interesting is pricing for Intel's Arc GPUs. The A770 16GB is nowhere to be seen on Newegg anymore, and the 8GB model has risen from $290 a few months ago and $320 at launch to now selling for $330 US. However, the A750 remains at $250, and the A380 has actually dropped to $120. What's much more interesting at the moment is seeing pricing for previous generation GPUs, particularly from NVIDIA. They've only really gotten serious about pushing RTX 30 series stock out the door last month, and this strategy has continued in June to an even more aggressive degree. Last month, we saw an average price drop of 4% across the five remaining models. This month, it's a 9% drop, led by huge reductions to the RTX 3060 and 3050 lowest prices available. The RTX 3060 is finally available for just $260, now well below its MSRP like it should have been for months now. The RTX 3050 is also, for the first time ever, available at or below its $250 MSRP, sitting at $230. These are much more appropriate prices for these cards, although they still face strong competition from AMD's mainstream models. If you're interested in an RTX 3060 Ti, these have also started to drop in price. For the 7 months prior to June, they've been holding pretty steady at around $400 US. Now they are priced at just $360 for the cheapest models, so it's clear that Nvidia has begun clearing these out to make room for the RTX 4060 series. However, there hasn't been much impact to the 3070 and 3070 Ti. Discounts began for these products last month, and they have held steady through to today. AMD are also continuing to be aggressive on price and matching whatever Nvidia decides to do. Last month we saw little price movement in their lineup, this month it's a 7% reduction on average. Most of the impact has been to cards priced below $400 US, the same segment Nvidia began reducing prices in. The RX 6750 XT for example is now $30 cheaper, the 6600 XT has fallen to $230, and the RX 6600 is insanely cheap at just $180 US. Even the RX 6500 XT has finally started to move to a much more appropriate $120 given how terrible that product is. In head-to-head -head battles, this generally keeps AMD in front from a cost per frame standpoint. While the RTX 3050 has fallen to $230, it still gets easily beaten by the RX 6600 at $180, and it's really no contest with the 6600 XT at the same price, the Radeon card is way faster. The RTX 3060 is looking much more respectably priced at $270, given its performance is similar to the 6600 XT, but the AMD card is still $40 cheaper. 
Team Red is also being aggressive on pricing for the 6700 XT, which is probably why it continues to be so popular. For just $310, you're getting similar performance to Nvidia's RTX 3060 Ti, which even with the latest set of discounts is still $50 more expensive. However, last generation pricing from both Nvidia and AMD right now is making it very difficult to recommend newer GPUs. For example, the RX 7600 is only 5% faster than the 6650 XT now testing at 1440p, yet it costs 13% more. It makes no sense to buy the newer RDNA 3 model at current pricing. Similarly, the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB is only around 5% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti on average at 1440p, yet it costs 11% more and has the same VRAM limitations. No wonder no one is interested in buying these models. We're also just a week or so away from NVIDIA releasing the GeForce RTX 4060, which they've announced will officially go on sale on June 29th at $300 US. NVIDIA are claiming a 20% performance improvement over the RTX 3060, which is why they've discounted the 3060 so heavily, and I would expect further price drops to come. This should also put pressure on other parts of NVIDIA's lineup, as well as AMD products like the RX 7600. The used market has responded to lower GPU prices as well, dropping by 7% on average for NVIDIA's RTX 30 series month on month. This is a similar price reduction to last month, as the market continues to keep the discount buying used around that 25% mark. The RTX 3060 used isn't a particularly great deal right now given those steep discounts on the new market, but other models are definitely worth exploring. The Radeon RX 6000 series hasn't dropped as much on the used market, so like in previous months, there are some cards worth considering and others that aren't. For example, getting used 6600 XT continues to be one of the better deals, sitting at that 25% discount versus new. However, the 6700 XT and 6750 XT are not such good deals. With just a 10% discount, you're better off buying a brand new card. So just make sure if you are considering a used AMD model that you check current pricing. It changes quite a bit on the AMD side from month to month or even week to week and might be a better deal than what you can find used. Older GPUs like the RTX 20 series also fell in price compared to last month at a similar pace to the rest of the market. What is most interesting here is the ongoing used price battle between the 2080 Ti and RTX 3070, both of which offer similar performance but the 2080 Ti has more VRAM at 11GB versus 8GB. The 2080 Ti has kept its value a lot better than the 3070 in recent months. It's currently priced at $358 on average versus just $289 for the 3070, a 24% premium. But back in January, both were similarly priced at $383 versus $384 on average, suggesting the used market has been responding to the VRAM discussion of 2023 and dropping the lower VRAM model more quickly in price since all of that has blown up. The GTX 16 series hasn't moved heaps in June compared to May, and there are still strange price oddities here like the GTX 1650 Super being more expensive on average than the GTX 1660, which is faster. Again, it pays to do your research here when buying used. Meanwhile, the RX 5000 series has dropped sharply this month by 16% on average. It seems there are a lot of used, likely mining cards still getting dumped on the used market, and that's presenting gamers with reasonable value here. The 5700 XT is still pretty fast, considering it's just $130 used on average at the moment. Overall, the GPU market in June has been both good and bad for GPU buyers simultaneously. It's bad in the sense that both new releases have been flops. The RTX 4060 Ti and the RX 7600 just aren't exciting products and aren't worth buying. It would have been much better if those cards were great buys in the sub $400 market. But the good news is that aside from newer models, pricing continues to fall quite a bit, especially for NVIDIA cards as both brands desperately try to clear existing stock and make room for new models. The RTX 3060, for example, has been significantly discounted and is finally priced at something reasonable, though who knows how much stock is still left. What this all means is that if you are planning on buying a graphics card, there are some pretty good deals to be had. It's just not going to be a current generation model. There are some exceptions here. If you are planning to spend more than $600, there's not a lot of previous generation stock left, but at least for the mainstream market, there continues to be a lot of competition across multiple generations and brands. We're also yet to see the entire lineups from NVIDIA and AMD, and we're expecting that to get more interesting shortly as NVIDIA are about to launch the RTX 4060, which at least based on what NVIDIA are saying, should be a more exciting product than the 4060 Ti 8GB.
AMD are yet to release mid-priced RDNA 3 products. We're expecting those somewhat soon. And of course, there's the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gig as well coming in July. So plenty of reviews to look forward to, even if you aren't going to buy those cards. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you do appreciate the content that we do here at Hardware Unbox, please do consider supporting us via our Patreon or Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You can access to some cool benefits like our Discord community, a monthly live stream, which will be coming up very shortly, I believe. We've got BTS videos, so all sorts of good perks there if you become a member. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.